Hello everyone and welcome to Fable Him and Age of Wonders 4. The Stranger Humanitas has claimed his military victory and joined our pantheon, the Immaterium. I kicked out all the story characters, so now it is just Erratus and the Stranger hanging out in the background, trying not to talk to each other. But there was a poll to decide this series, and the victor was none other than Morrigan, the Witch of the Wilds. So we'll be taking a little bit of a break between the story of Erratus and the Stranger, or the story of Erratus that the Stranger is involved in, and we will begin a brand new campaign. Now this campaign will be played on brutal difficulty. We played on hard with the Stranger, and I think we're ready to return to the brutal difficulty with everything that I have learned. We'll be playing on standard distances. There will be seven players. Let's keep that default. Classic turns, of course. And for our realm, when it comes to Ferelden, Thedas, really, continents or coasts really defines it. That would be the most accurate. However, coasts can be really strange where sometimes it spawns in something that I would find acceptable, like 70 to 80% is land, but sometimes half of the map is just water with nothing in it. So we're just going to keep it simple and do a land victory. Well, victory, land map, because I don't want to do continents because I, I have a scheme going on. There will be no climate traits, no inhabitant traits, and no presence. However, this land that Morgan has stumbled into through the crossroads of the Illuvian has a wondrous past. It is a warping wild where the realm is constantly in flux due to magical influence. Magical influence that has created a crystalline abundance with loads of mana nodes and mana pickups. And a land where the mortals themselves are infused with magic. And upon their demise, they give combat casting points. I don't know exactly how this works, so we're going to find out together. We're going to go into the advanced settings. And this will just be, I don't know, unstable magical realm. Creative naming. Creative naming. Uh, I guess that picture works. Yeah, sure. Good enough. Now, last time I showed you who we'll be fighting. This time, I'm going to leave it a secret until we discover them. But before I go about making Morrigan, we are going to turn off allied victory. There will be only one victor. We're going to leave scores normal. So this means that if this campaign reaches turn 150, which I kind of doubt it on brutal difficulty, whoever is in first place is the victor. But we are also going to leave on expansion and magical victory. And we'll be aiming ourselves for a magical victory. We'll see what we can do. Uh, we're not going to change any of the combat stuff. It is fine as it is. So, let us make Morrigan. Now, who is Morrigan? Morrigan from Dragon Age here. is a human female apostate mage who grew up in the Korkari wilds. But she fell in love with ancient magic and eventually repaired a number of Illuvians, magical mirrors that were used to cross between the worlds. And she stumbled into a new world. A new world full of strange beings that she has never seen before. And she will lead the feline barbarians that she has encountered. These barbarians, of course, are strong, increasing their melee and physical range damage by 10%. The barbarian culture pretty much exclusively uses that damage type, so I thought it'd be good. And for the mind trait, they are ferocious which deals plus 40% damage via retaliation and opportunity attacks. I believe these are just the starting traits for Orcoid, but it fits for pretty much any Barbarian. What is their and of culture? course, we're going to be playing Barbarians, which is one chaos, one nature, structured with food and draft income. Melee units have primal strikes so that deal plus eight blight damage on their first attack and the ritual of alacrity, which does stuff. I didn't even know they could do this. Friendly units on the center of the outpost or city will restore 50% HP, 100% movement points, and remove Exhausted from Force March. Hmm. Are we going to actually use Force March this time? Probably not. Probably not. What As for our society, society traits, most of these are coming from Morgan herself. Morgan lived and grew up in the Kurkari Wilds. Whenever she wanted to see something different, she had to escape from this watchful eye and learn how to barter by herself. She knows how to get what she wants. Pronouncements cost minus 50% less, 
This will affect our declarations of friendship, rivalry, fabricating grievances, I think, and stuff like that. Trade deals with free cities cost you minus 100% resources. This either means it costs half or it's free. We'll see. We also start with an extra scout unit and diplomatic focus, providing us with plus one whispering stone from the general tree. And Morrigan, of course, loves ancient wonders. This makes it so that ancient wonders do not require population in order to be annexed into a city, and cities gain plus 20% production per annex ancient wonder. Also, we begin with one cleared nearby. Are these always bronze, or can we get really lucky and roll like a starting silver or even golden wonder? Now that would be spicy. Choose your first tome. As for our tomes, Morgan really falls under three types of magic, in my humble opinion. Astral, she is a mage after all. Materium, she loves ancient wonders and creating stuff. And last but not least, nature, which is what we will be doing. The Witch of the Wilds really isn't that different from regular mages, except they practice a forgotten primal form of magic that involves shapeshifting. Unfortunately, shapeshifting is not in the game, so we're going to do the next best thing which is summoning and buffing animals. It'll be fighting alongside our brave kitty cats. And we'll be going with Wizard King once again. All cities have plus 10% mana income. We gain plus five world map and combat casting points per level. And Wizard Kings can, of course, over channel once per combat. Reveal so yourself. now I shall do my best to recreate Morgan. Now I've done my best with what I have available to me. Morgan wears quite a unique outfit, but this one's a little bit more provocative, although the chess piece is kind of accurate. And normally Morgan's hair is up with something closer to this, but the bun didn't feel right because it's normally kind of chaotic back there. So I thought we'd let it down a little bit and do um, the anime death flag hairstyle. <laughs> I quite like it. We're using the druid staff, which gives us a staff. In Dragon Age, the staff is the conduit for most mages to use magic. And it also gives us sap strength as a passive, which seems kind of appropriate. If we can find a cool orb, I would love to give it to her, but we'll start with the staff. As for our race, they're just cats. Albino cats. <laughs> with dark hair just like me. Isn't that fantastic? Begins. Now as for our name, the Witch of the Wilds actually fits here. I was flabbergasted because it doesn't fit here in the first name. Look, it ends right there. Morgan is known only as Morgan. She has no first name, or rather no last name that we are aware of. We don't even know who her father is. Maybe she doesn't even have a father. Flemeth is kind of an abomination. She's going to lead the Korkari Wilders. In the Korkari Wilds live the Cass Chassined Wilders, and you know, this is close enough. Chassined are human, so we'll just go with Korkari. It's fine. As for her first name, we're going to break open some lore. In Dragon Age Inquisition, if Morgan has a son, Kieran, he, there are two options that could happen. Would you ask who, her, who his mother is? If Kieran is just a basic child, he will say that she is the Witch of the Wilds. However, if Kieran has the old god soul because he performed the ritual in Dragon Age Origins, he will say that she is the Inheritor. She who awaits a new age. And so, Morrigan, the Witch of the Wilds, the inheritor who awaits a new age, will be seeking to enact the age of nature. And we are here in the unstable magical realm, to invoke, clever name, the age of nature. I did go back in and swap the Inheritor and Morgan around, so Morgan is now her first name, and the Inheritor is now her last name. I did that because I noticed... Oh, we have the same start. Uh, when I clicked on the army, it uses their first name, and I saw Army of the Inheritor, and I was like, mm, nope. Uh, however, our start is pretty questionable. We have a Tier 1 Warrior, the Melee, who actually have a stun, that's pretty nifty, and the Tier 1 Skirmisher who can throw a javelin to inflict center defense and bash people with melee strikes. And of course, we have two scouts, which is a really bad start. But the reason that is because on Brutal Difficulty, the hard start, oh, hello, uh, is defaulted. We have a hard beginning, which reduces our total starting resources and the amount of units to begin with. 
So we're on brutal difficulty. We just gotta suck it up. And that is what I chose. As always, we're gonna go with the workshop. Get that production rolling. The battle ritual site is unique to the barbarian. I believe this is supposed to be the knowledge building. So we're actually gonna be lacking quite a bit of knowledge, which is unfortunate. We begin with the Silver Pond, courtesy of our Ancient Wonder thing. I don't believe it always starts directly next to you, but the Silver Pond counts as a farm, gives plus 20 food for faster growth, and of course the Imperium income. We gain city stability per fishery, farm, and forester within the domain. That's going to be very good. We heal 30 points at the end of each strategic turn, and Spring Fairy, Summer Fairy, Autumn Fairy, and Winter Fairies are added to the Rally of Lieges. I love fairies. This is going to be great. Boom. That was, of course, free to annex, courtesy of Wonder Architects being amazing. Now let's take a look at the map. Uh, where are we? We are in the dead smack middle. That's not good. Okay, great. Yeah, good start. Also, our city, Ragash. No, 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 no. We'll give him the Whispering Stone. Why not? Morgan, of course, lived in the Krikori Wilds, which had no proper city. However, the closest city, it was more of a fort. That's fine was Ostagar. Ruined, of course, by the time of Dragon Age Origins, but no big deal. I guess we're going to do these fights with our scouts and go from there. A risky battle. Triple storm scale serpents. How does the AI do? Okay. Yep. That's about as expected. Great. We are going to have to produce a lot of units. Rather quickly. So how far can you guys go? About that far. Are these the lucky sunflowers? They sure are. And Morgan begins with her stick. Which doesn't make her the greatest offensive character the world's ever seen. That's okay. If we need to, we can sacrifice our scouts to the greater good. <laughs> Something Morgan wouldn't care a whole lot about. Now if you don't know who Morgan is, there are pretty much two things you need to know about her. One. Morgan, above all else, loves personal freedom, and she will do anything to attain that. Okay. Good stun, good stun. The second thing you need to know is that she absolutely... Do I roll the 75%? Pursues ancient... That is not the button I selected, game. I was going to throw something. Uh, pursues ancient and lost knowledge. We could berserk this guy. If we wanted to. Maybe we wait. I also could have marked his prey. We'll see how this plays out. So we'll be using pretty much three affinities for good old Morgan. Nature, primarily focusing on beasts, as mentioned, and oh, we'll be using Astral, because she is, of course, a mage in her own right. That is some fat damage. I was really torn on whether I wanted her to go primarily Astral, or to go primarily Nature. And I ultimately came to the conclusion of going primarily nature due to the fact that she's a Witch of the Wilds. And we can do plenty of astral playthroughs. It's probably in my best interest to kill this. Oh, I can kill it with you. So we're going to kill this guy. We're going to turn the skirmisher around and put him on defense mode. That explosion there, I got scared, thought it was the Curse of Undeath again. That explosion is me gaining castle points, which is all very well and good. What a tough fight. I can't go for the stun again. We could mark his prey, which might be the play. How much does it cost? Five? That's really cheap. That's good. Uh, we have a 70 from here for three shots. Let's take it. Not bad. I have to move out of the clover, but I'd rather have three shots. And I still flanked. Er, grazed. There we go. Well done, well done. No losses. Painful, though. 
Thankfully, we're going to get a lot of mana pickups due to the whole mana instability thing. So as long as we... Uh, I might have to heal before I take that on. Gross. Now, our workshop was actually reduced because we annexed a farm, which is nice. Even though it wasn't a real farm. So let's get a trooper up. We'll have to wait a little bit, but that's okay. You can go exploring. Are we closer? We're technically closer... Kind of to the west, I guess? We're annexing in this direction, so... Shall we go exploring? I'm gonna need this unit for this fight, I think. So let's get that way. We're gonna need to annex this gold vein, I believe. As for arcane research, we are, of course, starting with... I want this. All from the animals and cavalries. Gain two bullshit defense and one strength. And now we aren't gonna have any cav as the barbarians. There is a trick, a trick to have, like your furies on a mount. I don't know how it works. I'm assuming you just choose the mount thing. The mount societal trait. But let's summon a wild animal. That's where a lot of our reinforcements are going to come from. Of course, barbarians are good as well, but... That was the instability. Doing stuff. I don't know what exactly, but stuff. Can I pump this guy out? It's expensive, but I think I have to, team. I think I'm going to need him. We can go ahead and do that. Does it become desolate or something? Rocky. Mm. Uh, so we can either take the pastures to go faster or the gold to gold faster. Or this to produce faster. Let's see. I think we go double farm. Double farm is always a safe opening. Farm into Forester. I have one Forester. So let's just go into the pastures to grow faster. I have an army over there. On top of mana, of course. Of course you have mana. Everyone gets mana. See how the AI does here? It is okay. Probably fine. Let's see, you are a scout, warlock. This could be sketch, but it was fine. All right. We're gonna chill. Grab that pickup. We probably wanna start producing another unit. I can't. That's fine. Now Morrigan is gonna go back and forth between battle magic and support magic. Do we go pack leader? Currently, no animals to be had. And experience leader is actually going to be very helpful. In the Humanitas playthrough, I was back and forth on whether I wanted this experience or not. But I think we're going to go ahead and take it. Because a lot of the summon animals do evolve into bigger animals. So the more... That we can... Grow, the better. Wow. The friendly stone tree. Guild Mistress Quaria Stonax of the Furry City Stone Tree is enthused about meeting you for the first time. Well, Max, which of the wilds, Morrigan the Inheritor? We heard great things about you. We Talpit artisans hope our humble Furry City can learn more from you. Now, Morrigan, I don't believe Morrigan would actually dabble in, like, demonic blood magic, but she was always apathetic, not apathetic, sympathetic, that's the word, to the Maleficar, mm -hmm. those who did blood magic stuff. So, I could see her befriending. Our production blows. So I guess we just need to try and fix that, huh? Hmm. I'm not against getting the vendor early, but I think it's best to get the stonemason. I love production. Production's so good. The faster we get production, the faster we can produce stuff. Who would have guessed? We can also annex again. And I think I'm going to. I'm going to get a forester on this production. Our small monster den is over there, which is nice. I'm glad I didn't move too far. Our scout can go grab that. 
head back to the city. And Morgan can go this way. Clear this out. Crump that thing. All very well and good. We have a wonder here. Serpents, okay. Not bad. We'll probably want to clear that out sooner rather than later. I want to get this Pathfinder out of my army as well. That just did something. So if we have a city here... Oh, cartographer. We might be able to expand in this direction relatively safely. Maybe. Some archers and a bannerman. Let's see how the AI does. Can I do banner? Maybe. We'll try it. So probably what happened here is the archers all focused one warrior. And the AI didn't really let them... Didn't really play around that. Is this obstruction? Yes. Cool. If I had to guess. The AI can play around it in a few ways. I think here. One. Hmm. We could wait. Wait this out. Bet we will. Okay, there's the boosts. So the reason I decided to wait this out. Oh, weekend. Fancy. Is because now. We can go in and tie them all up. I can even mark one of them as prey. Why can't I move here? Hmm. I could try for this stun. 66. Nah. Let's just prey him up. Oh, yeah. All well and good. You can knock him. Remember that blight damage is coming from us being barbarians. I've heard barbarians are really strong, and um, it's true. <laughs> barbarians are good. They have some of the most aggressive mechanics in the game. Do I think one hit can do it? Sure can. So unlike some factions where they have a slow start and you want to use tomes to support that, Barbarians, you can kind of just rely on the Barbarian mechanics and do whatever you want. If that makes sense. I don't even think I need to mark his prey here. I think I can conserve my 358 mana. Okay. Turns out, when there's a lot of mana pickups, um, you're going to be having a good time. Cool. Morale very low. You're right. Your morale is very low. Told you I could do better than the AI. Although that that's a very high... Really? Are you... Whatever, I'll just hit you. It might be that evasive thing. Which is really annoying. I think they are. Well, we'll roll the 50 from a safe direction and still manage to hit our friends. <sighs> Good job. Do not let them flee. We are barbarians. We run them down. Or they'll just add a poison. Told you I could do better. I suppose if you don't do better than the AI, that's not a good sign. Especially on Brutal Difficulty. Alrighty righty We might want to grab... One of these to start getting damage, but maybe we don't. Maybe we just support our units. Until Morgan pops off. Look at that, down to three. Is that because that was production I just picked up? Man, I'm so smart. Now, as for the Imperium tree, we're really split on our traits here. So we're slowly gaining nature, but everything else is going to be a really slow grind. Like, we could wait 
seven turns to get the Call of Chaos, so this gives me a unit, but I think it's better we just do it. You know? Just do it. We can grab a Forester. I kind of want that Mana Node. And that Gold Bane. I think I'm going to get this Forester. So we can spend our Imperium to keep boosting our city for a little bit until, you know, we start really get the trades rolling. Which won't be too long. Well, did this become rocky again? Ugh. There is a desert tile here. Wow, okay. That is five units. Well, they're all tier ones, but that's still kind of scary. Uh, we're mostly healed. This terrain blows to move through. To the AI racks. The AI kills my skirmisher units. You start producing stuff. Oh, it was also pointed out to me that if you enable the AI to use spells, I said in one video that I don't think they actually do, but they do. It just, you have to accept the results before it consumes your mana. Sounds good to know. Now, these are little doggies. In fact, we might even get a few of these. These infernal pups. Do they evolve? They do. That one. We can check what that evolution is right here. The Inferno Hound. I think those are tier 2 units. Yep. Okay. Alright. Now, we do want to tie up these guys. Because even though... They can hit you, right? Yeah, but they also have throwing attacks, which are pretty bad. Bad for me, that is. Not, like, bad, bad. We'll go ahead and mark his prey. We could even sap strength here. In fact, I might do it here. Yeah, okay. Oh, no. I streamed the Total War Warhammer 3, and the command to execute stuff is different in that game. Uh, the eternal problem. It might be better to just guard here. It's guard or stun. In fact, I think it's worth stunning if I can hit it. Yes, fantastic. Whenever we do get a successful stun, we instantly go into guard mode. So, like, there's no reason to never not, unless we just don't think we can hit the stun. Good hints. I don't think stun units can dodge. Might be incorrect. Poisoned. Okay. Going well so far. We want to get a huge shot here. This guy's going to need some help. Do I mark as prey again? I'm a little worried about this warrior team. I could do double mark as prey. Maybe. We could also just stun this guy. Good stun. And then you guys go tie this up. And Morrigan can shoot this to reduce their damage. I grazed, unfortunately. Ugh. We're fine, we're fine, everything's fine. This is a good example of why I don't like the Horde upgrade Spawnkin. A lot of people use that in Barbarian builds, but Spawnkin makes it so you have you do 20% more damage, but you have... Is it double the models? You have more... It's not double, but you have more models in your, your army thing, your units. But of course, for each model death, that reduces the damage that the unit deals. So if you have more units, HP loss becomes more detrimental to you. Uh, well, would you look at that? I said if we got an orb, I'll use it. And so we did. The Satirical Orb. 10 repeating holy damage. Light damage? Do I actually know what that is? Just tell me. Huh. 
and a chance to inflict despair. Oregon would inflict despair upon all of our enemies. Morgan. I think can I do can I change this here? I can. Why is your pose weird? Your pose is that. Hmm. I don't know. She's just hanging out, just vibing. <laughs> Except in nature. Grab this cartography tent and find the mage's tower. Oh dearie me. Hi. This is an ancient wonder that we did not encounter in our last playthrough. This is the one that can give you a bone dragon. It's a pretty spooky fight. I fought... I think I've done two all through campaign missions. We have completed the research Summon Wild Animal. Now, Primal Mark is going to be very useful for us in the future. Because, of course, this will apply to most, if not all, animals. Giving them Primal Strike. But I think it's more important for us now to gain Visions of Victory. We can use this to increase our crit chance. And like I said, we're going to summon lots of animals. We have gotten our first Imperium skills, and we're going to want this eventually. We'll get it now. Um, I'd like to plop down a city sooner rather than later. This looks like a dead end, however. If we're expanding this way... Hmm. Might not be a bad idea to do it over here. We'll see, we'll see. Remember, on Brutal Difficulty, the AI loves to expand. Farmland? Uh, very quickly. That is a unicorn, which is really scary. We can now summon our wild animal. What do we get? We grab a tier 2 unit, the Warg. Not bad, not bad. Nothing special, but not bad. Another frontline unit for us. Do you have mana upkeep? You do. So you are magical origin. We can actually make use of that later. I wasn't sure if animals that we summoned would get the magical origin tag, but that does change things. It's high. Just casual golden unit. Or golden wonder right here. As expected, they destroyed one of our warriors. I don't know if I can save him. He is quite wounded. But we can give it a shot. How far can you move? Remember, the unicorn can not only run far because, well, it's a unicorn. It can also teleport, which is all well and good. Uh -huh. Morgan, can we talk about why that is your pose? I think it's an issue with the orb. Uh, hmm. Maybe if I change the pose and change it back, it'll fix itself? I doubt it, but maybe. You are in a weird spot. What are the chances to stun you? 90%. I'm gonna stun the... Wow, you resisted 90%. -er. Oh, dear mother of pearl. I believe these guys are also that agile thing. Mm, that's not good. Do I go in again? Now, the unicorn is a shock unit, which is important to know. Because it means that the unicorn doesn't like being tied up very much. Do I try for a despair? Or do I just sap strength? I don't over channel. Oh dear. Oh, since I did, let's go ahead and make use of it. The despair isn't great. Well, not useful anyway. Oh yeah, I forgot I had you guys. Well, come contribute to the damage. One of them died. Very nice. Please don't die. Oh no. Rip. I could not save them. 
look at that fat damage coming in. Um. Okay, we'll kill that. And we'll go in with a stun for you. Good. And because you're stunned, I can shoot you. All well and good. I should have marked his prey. That's fine. Berserk is still in. That damage is absolutely nutty. And I kind of need to win now. Or else my Berserk scheme will turn against me. Not bad. Not bad. Losing the warrior is unfortunate, but... Like I said, it's kind of... Expected. Oh, look, a bunch of pigs. What do we got? An Inferno Hound. I can actually check now if you evolve. I don't think you do. You do not. So we have a lot of... Uh, mid units, but that's okay. They do have Pack Hunter. Do they both have Pack Hunter? They do. Hmm. Melee attacks deal plus 20% damage per friendly adjacent unit with Pack Hunter. So if they're standing together, they're going to get a huge damage boost. We can also research Animal Kinship, which gives all of our... Barbarians, plus 10% damage if they're standing next to an animal. I need to make more units, and I need to make more scouts. We'll start with a scout. And we'll go into a Sunder. 82 to finish this. Do we finish this? I think we go into a... Hmm. Maybe we wait... Two turns until the communal tents. We can. What can we do here? I do think we're going to need more research. I typically don't build the research post quickly. But research is going to be a huge deal for us. And barbarians, as you may know, don't do a whole lot of that. So. Uh, we'll do that. You can chill. The fact that I'm using a scout with my army still makes me mildly upset. Do we get pack leader? I think we get... What does this do again? Plus one defense, plus one resistance. Let's get mage craft. Because we're starting to do damage now with the orb. Oh yeah, I want to change your pose. See if we can fix this. This is the pose I was going to do. Oh, I could have just re... Oh, I couldn't have renamed her. I was like, I can just rename her there. Maybe it's just how she is on the world map. Hmm. Excuse me? Oh. During diplomatic negotiations, Guild Mistress Quaria Stoneaxe of Stone Tree sends you a bottle filled with an unknown substance. Oh, witch of the wilds. Morrigan, the inheritor, we talpid artisans feel blessed by your presence. In anticipation of our new pact, we had this small gift sent to you. Quaria Stoneaxe holds up a glass. In our culture, we share this drink when we forge a bond. She takes a sip and coughs heavily, waiting for you to return the gesture. You open the bottle and feel nauseous from the smell alone. Is your relation with Stone Tree truly worth this? Now, Morgan, you could argue Morgan would do one of two things. She would accept it out of sheer curiosity for whatever this is. Or she would reject it and say she doesn't want to do it because she is a strong, independent woman who don't need no suggestions. Uh, but we're going to take it. And I really want to go home now. But we march forward. We also have the underground here. How does the... Oh, there was a hidden thing. Wow. Okay. This could be too much, team. Could be. We'll see. Now, if Morgan falls, she will come back, but it is still an undesirable outcome. It is also worth noting... Oh, I still don't have fortune. The pigs are charge units, so if we can get in and tie them up, well, all is mostly well. Uh, Alright, mark you as prey. Over channel. Mark you as prey. 
go here. Stun. Send in the fully health Inferno Hounds. Maybe we should have the unit that was stunned? I don't know. Now you're going to go here and block this guy. I'm going to use you as a shield. Morgan's going to go in and just shoot stuff. I'm hitting that guy because he is... Oh, it's a bad 50-50. If I miss and hit my own unit, I'd be big sad. It's possible this guy gets charged. If I go here, or he flanks. One or the other. Let's see what happens. Poisoned. Oh, he goes from that guy. Okay. The bleeding is bad. Hmm. Yeah, swooping is bad. Ah, this unit might be dead. I think you kill this. Then I think Morgan kills this. With a 100%. Good spares. Now I need to move out of the way. Facing this defend, okay. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're going to make this mark spray. We're gonna send in the skirmishers to absolutely crump it and kill. And now you go here and defend. Okay. See if we can win here. Okay, that's fine. Beautiful fumbles. Oh, saved by the fumble. Huh. What's my hit chance here? Oh, 100. Easy. GG, no re. Oh, I should have gone for the flank. The full flank. Be good enough. Is it too late to mark it as prey? I mean, yes and no. No, and that I can still do it. Yes, and that I should have done it earlier. No losses. I need to get back to my capital. The Ring of Protection. Nice. All right, so Morgan's going to go back. You can take the ring for now. We will want that on a melee hero eventually. Um, I think we do want to, excuse me, establish a city over here. Bone dragons. More bone dragons. All the bone dragons. We're tier two. Which means we We're tier two and we're stable. Nice. Um Let's grab this for knowledge. Because I talked about how much I need that. Then we'll grab uh, we can wait. Do we want to do any improvements? Her adjacent forester. So we want to put this on a Uh, place is not a forester, probably. Draft per adjacent for province with a forest. Oh, look at that. As long as it doesn't start changing, it'll be fine. We can now get our tier 2 units, and we have access to two of them. The Fury and the War Shaman. The War Shaman is our support unit, so we're going to queue that guy up. Negotiations have succeeded. The Pact of Cooperation. Can I trade with you? I can. It is free. Wow. Um, okay. I'll pay zero gold for 10 draft. Sure. Why not? Or excuse me, zero gold for 30 draft. Which doubled my draft. Yep, that seems good. Let's go find someone else to milk. It's free. I didn't know it was free. I thought it was just really cheap. I was hoping it was free, mind you, but... Well, hello. Sometimes fate puts adversaries in our way to test our resolve. I hope for all of our sakes that you are no such adversary. 
So this is Kalidor Dragon Tamer. Kalidor Dragon Tamer, one of the strongest High Elven Mages in Warhammer lore of all time. Personally, well, he had some help, but he ended up creating the Great Vortex that sealed off the Chaos Invasion, the first Chaos Invasion of the world. And uh, in lore, he's actually tied up in the Vortex for all of eternity. However, I thought it'd be fun if the Vortex basically destroyed his body, as you can see he has an astral body in this weird hat thing, and spit him out in this realm. So yeah, Kalidor doesn't like me very much. Is there a particular reason? You're not going to tell me here on the screen. He is an erudite sage, so he likes empires that do not break treaties. He likes empires with stronger research. I'm Okay, I don't have that. He dislikes empires that are at war, and he dislikes empires with strong military. He favors treaties. All wars must be justified. He likes to explore. And he likes expansion. We can send him a welcoming gift. <laughs> you think a feeble attempt at flattery will convince me of your goodwill? You will need more than that, Witch of the Wilds. He doesn't like me very much, but that might change. Some of this is going to be related to... So he's wary of my threat, that's a big deal. Just met an inherent dislike. Okay. So as he grows stronger and as those fade away, um, he'll probably be down to treaty with me. Probably. I hope. Um, I want to get back to the boundary, but I don't want to go too far. Because like I said, I kind of want to construct a city over here so we can eventually absorb Father Oak. Although I guess I could also go this way and do it. Maybe we can get Father Oak in our cap. Oh, here he is. In our capital city. I found him. My Pathfinder's up. Go north. Ooh, another wonder. That's where we're going. Take it back. Remember, for each wonder we have annexed in a city, they gain 20% production. So we do want to get the Spring of Youth here. I also want to build another city. It's very important to me that we build another city. Did I turn on freaking mountains? I didn't. I'm joking. But there are so many of them. We can always blow them up. Jeez. Okay. Do I want a third scout? I kind of do. Especially now that they're one turn. Let's grab it. I'm not going to attract pop here. We can do it next turn. Battle ritual sites. Okay. I screwed up. I shouldn't have queued this. I still want to scout, but we'll unqueue it. We'll build a vendor? I want a storehouse, I want a tavern, and I want a vendor. We'll start with the vendor to get more gold, though. Our first, or another empire skill is available. Farms grant plus five food. This is good. Or later? it give us... Would it give us food from this? I mean, growing faster is better. We'll get it. It's fine. We also have excavation and general seafaring. We won't need seafaring because we are on a land map. Fucking rude. Well, I can still put gold on that. Okay, we are fully healed. We are casting another spell. And we are moving towards this wonder. I think. Yes? Yeah, sure. <laughs> this map is going to look very strange. We did end up growing again. And I think we want another forester. I mean, we have two. What do you need? A quarry. Ah. Well, this can only be a quarry. Is there anything else I should take? that has something on it? Not really. Alright. I do want that gold mine. Soon. Alright, we can get that Pathfinder. Queued up. Um, We'll get the Shaman out. In fact, I could just rush it for 36. Or... Rush that for 22. 
and then get a shrine. Because our mana is going to need it. You are hanging out. You going to go down? Should we go see what's under it? Well, well, well. Look who it is. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I am First Protector Blint, the Underdelver of the Deep Dwellers. Let us hope this realm is big enough for both of us. It's Blint the Pink. He's back. I was hoping I'd find you last, but that's okay. Unfortunately, I don't have enough money to send you a gift. It is what it is. Why don't you like me? You are wary and you just met me. Okay. At least you don't have any inherent dislike. He, of course, Blint, the growing meme on the channel, disliked Erratus immensely and even went to war with him, liked the stranger immensely, and was my one and only steadfast ally through the entire series. So how he treats Morrigan is yet to be determined. I imagine it'll be okay. Morgan, of course, loves ancient wonders, loves building things, but she also is trying to invoke the Age of Nature, which I'm not sure Blint would appreciate, although he does have one nature thing. I don't know why. Ah, Adept Settlers. That'll do it. That'll do it. All right, well. Oh, dear. Oh, Lord. Welcome to Brutal Difficulty. All right, so we found Crystalios. We have acquired the visions of victory. Let's get the Wild Speaker. A tier two units. I also want Animal Kinship. I want both of these. Middle Lock Kinship. A new rally has begun. I am broke, but I want this. Which one do we want? We want a battle mage, right? So that's probably... Let's get the Winter Fairy. Your upkeep is expensive, though. Holy shite. Pathfinder is 8 gold. Let's pump it out. And go this way. Really? Really? We can summon a wild animal. And we got the Ice Spider. Yes. So the Ice Spider evolves into a tier 4. The Ice Spider Matriarch. I think she has Imperium upkeep. So like, there's an argument to not. Please let me hover over this. Are you locked yet? Fine. Whatever. <laughs> there's an argument to not level her. It's just not a good argument. You know? Mana. Mana, mana, mana. Hey, Blint. Uh, Blint, I want this stuff. You're not allowed to, to build a city down here. Maybe build a city up here? That looks nice and... Lava. <laughs> I don't know why I turned that setting on. I just thought it'd be fun, you know? he says as more ice appears. You have received an official invitation from the friendly guild mistress of Stone Tree, the great witch of the wilds, Morrigan, the inheritor. We of Stone Tree hereby humbly invite you to join the name day celebration of our guild mistress. We would be honored if you would attend and we look forward to your gift. You are invited to celebrate the name day of Quaria Stoneaxe. What do you bring? Um... So this sways them. I believe the happier they are, the faster you gain allegiance, right? We'll send a flattering portrait. Remember, Morgan is silver-tongued. Morgan knows what people like, and she will provide it to them to achieve her ultimate goal. As your troops approach the band of mercenaries' guard, they raise the white flag. Now, Morgan is neither good nor evil. She is quite literally... Not true neutral, but, you know, she's in it for herself. So we're going to be a little bit nice. We'll do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. More fairies. Unfortunately, I don't have the mana upkeep to sustain a fairy. So we're just going to have to chill on that for a little bit. I also don't have enough gold, thanks to the freaking lady, uh, to do anything. So we'll chill on that as well. Chief Dislurash Gertak of the free city of Whetstone greets you nervously, as if they might invoke your wrath at any given moment. 
Well met. Morgan the Inheritor, we call Kari Wilders of Whetstone have heard many stories about the torment of shadows you went through and the power that you wield. We hate to imagine what you forsook to earn it. Hopefully you will curb any potential power-hungry tendencies as you make your way through these lands. Very rude. But you think I'm just going to kill you. I thought about it. But I'm not going to. These guys are also Korkari Wilders. So this is our... I believe you are... It's hard-coded to have, like, a Tier 1 settlement of the same type nearby. Um, so we could just annex these guys if we want to. We're not in a horrible spot. We'll see. They're already our people, so we don't have to make the decision of, like, migrating them or anything. Chieftain Bragdestracker. Of the free city of Gorpit greets you with flashing eyes, a big grin, and a proud stance. Strength and blood! Glory to you, Morrigan, the Inheritor. We raging brutes of Gorpit welcome you to these lands of strife. We look forward to seeing your strength on the battlefield, be it alongside or against you. I count like they're all about fighting, but they're good. Also, they're a tier 4 settlement, so... Sorry. This is mine. We only have two Whispering Stones right now, but we will get a third. Eventually. I guess we can go down there and see what's up. Um, High Whetstone. Go down there and see what's up. I don't like seeing all these giant... That is a Shrine of Smiting. Oh, okay. Who's that? Oh, it's what? It's Scorpit. Got it. We could summon another wild animal, but I think I'm going to chill. Um, but, 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 but I want... Do I want all of this? Yes? Now, because we are in Brutal Difficulty, uh, Call of Chaos, you could avoid picking this up because, you know, it's whatever. But because we're in Brutal Difficulty, these infestations are going to get very out of hand very fast. This Great Bird Nest could very well give me a Phoenix. So that's cool. Again, whenever we have a high tier unit, it will have Imperium Upkeep, which you could say is not so great. But, well, it is what it is. Speaking of, it is what it is. Do I do this? I don't think I can annex this far. Yet. What are you standing on? An entwined scourge to stand on a mana pickup. Okay, yeah, great. I'm not going to do this fight because I want... This was a good place for a city, but I don't think it is anymore. I think we just put down an outpost. Are you all spawn? Holy sh... Are you awake already? Huh. Wow. Um, I think... Whoa, can I take... That's a lot. I'm scared. Uh, but I think I want... What's the button? That's not it. I want to place down a, an outpost here, I think. There we go. Put it here. Get that Archon Blood, and then annex the Haunted Halls. That does, unfortunately... Uh, that does, unfortunately, mean... Okay. I think a long-term goal would be to absorb Gorpit and get them to take this. Remember, a tier 4 vassal. Is it dead? No. Uh, will be a relatively high area. Oh, you're already building an outpost. The fuck? I need to get a city going. Oh, 
Uh, okay. That's fine. What do you do? Units are minus one percent gold recruit. Wow. That is good. You're in a terrible spot, but that's good. Okay. Wild speaker is complete. Let's get animal kinship. I didn't even check what call the wild was, but animal kinship is more important to me right now. Let us get the tavern. Or the market. Go a tavern because we withdrew the stone, so this is going down quickly. And I unfortunately cannot afford a wild speaker. Next turn. Okay. We're underground passage here. Maybe I go check that out. I don't want to build an underground city, but I'm not against it. I don't think I can take this. Without some pretty crazy losses. If we just waddle here, they'll come attack me, I think. Go see what's cranking. Okie dokie. I guess I just take the long way here. Three turns. Um, ground, okay. You chill. Would you look at that? Kalidor has declared friendship. And for us to declare friendship, it's only 50 gold. So let us do the same. Now, when declaring, declaring friendship, I used to... I still... I'm not sure about this. Whenever someone declares friendship, that means that it will increase the modifier of your relationship up to plus 300. And of course, there's reduction in grievances. If you return that declaration, that will increase up to 400 per active treaty. But I also was informed that if you don't have a declaration of friendship, like if you don't declare one, the AI doesn't necessarily treat you as a friend, even if it's declared one. I don't know if that's true. It might be. I don't doubt it, to be honest. I could see the AI acting that way. Uh, we might be able to sell him information on Blint. Speaking of Blint, shall we declare friendship with you as well? That's going to cost a lot of money. We now have 30, plus 30 gold upkeep that we didn't have before because we want to be friendly. Now, Morrigan really couldn't care less about people. This is so many birds. See that it is? Yikes. But she also knows who to befriend and who to make their enemies. And Kalidor... He is, he's worthy of friendship. Oh, this is going to be tough. Now, this time, we have our support unit. The War Shaman. Look at him. Looking all fancy. The War Shaman has Poison Blast and has Invigorate, which is a minor heal, but it also grants strength and regeneration. So I think I'm going to pop it early. Next turn when the skirmishers can get in. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about this team. Is this the big net? It is. Okay. So you need to back up. So with this net, this web, we might be able to do something really cheeky. We'll see. I think we, we save it. We save it. Now these guys are going to charge into me. I think we go into them first. Do 
do I over channel this? We'll zap their strength. Do I want to contribute to this with you guys? Maybe. I think you're safe here. So we could throw a 90 percenter. Good hit, good hit. I will be poisoned if I'm standing here. And one of the birds can reach, two of the birds can reach me. And a flank if I don't. Alright, we we'll take the poison. Oh, it's distracted. It's not poison. Oh, it's fine. Uh, now for this. We could go in. Kind of. I'm trying to get to an obscuring place because the, the Thunderbirds, which are the big scary things here, are tier... are ranged units. Okay. Okay. Right, they can do that too. I'm gonna have to leave immediately. Alright. Well. Go here. I'm not even gonna roll the 60%. Just gonna hit them. Uh, do I try this? I guess so. One frozen. Could be worse. Good hits. That crit rate coming in hot. Okay. There's only one bird left. We'll kill it with you. I really need to get on the, um, the Thunderbirds. Them being able to roam freely is going to be a huge problem. And this work is uber dead. Why are the birds so hard for you to hit? Do I roll a 5%er? Whatever. I don't get it. Sometimes you can, um... Do I berserk the skirmisher? Sometimes you can roll a really bad... Oh, good misses. You can roll a really bad shot and hit an enemy next to you. Works out really well sometimes. Alright, you're no longer frozen. This isn't a great use of your time. That's fine. I don't want to be standing there, if I can help it. We're tying up the Thunderbird. You're hitting the Thunderbird. Do we dare stun? We can actually kill this bird, I think. Maybe. Ooh, that's not good. This is a dead skirmisher, but I think the bird can't do anything. I think. I need more units. Okay, that's fine. Okay. The bird is dead. Hurrah, hurrah. The bird is dead. Mark you as prey. I could over-channel here and get a second Marcus Prey, but I think we just do damage. I think damage is just good, team. Could go for a heal, but I really don't think it's necessary. Very good. We'll stun this one. Good stun. And then hit. Okay. 
That was scary. We only lost one unit out of it. I don't know if we can press on, though. I think we need to pull back. Or at least get an outpost going. We lost the skirmisher and we lost the warg. Uh. Mm -hmm. Building the outpost in that oh. is a terrible idea. It's hard to explain just how terrible of an idea it is. What are you standing on? Gold. Wait, is that a hostile city? I'm very worried about my units. Do I dare? I might... Oh, the Phoenix is such a huge pain in the ass. I might actually be able to do this. I don't know if I believe I can. Do I try it? I got wiped in the Total War Warhammer stream, so maybe we go here and we try... Risky stuff again. The hostile, uh oh. Sage Vasile, Verdbringer of the Free City Mystery, greets you with hostility. We gracious evokers of Mystery will fight for our freedom and send against anyone who threatens our free city, even when they are led by a witch of the wilds like you. The blood of invaders, thieves, and spies will nourish the fields. Okay. That's fine. Not great, but fine. I want a lot of this. It's probably... <laughs> I want everything here. I want a storehouse. I want the foundation for the Imperium income. I want the market. I want the mana obelisk. I want the blacksmith. Basically, if it's boosted, I want it. And this, knowledge is important, and I have very little of it. Okay. This is fine. Everything's fine. Totally fine. Grab a warrior. Do I a lightning evoker? We defensive training. We've also gained a hero skill. Let's summon animal. That seems good. Also, my scheme for Morgan had her being one nature affinity short. And now we fix that. <sighs> oh. Well, well, well. Would you look who it is? So you are the inconsiderate witch of the wilds, Morgan the Inheritor. I'm the best Grimgor Ironhide. Many god you may war, I aim to make peace, even with the likes of you. <laughs> oh, shit. So this is Grimgor Ironhide. The biggest and the baddest. Uh, one of the greatest black orcs to have ever lived in the Warhammer universe. Warhammer fantasy universe. And somehow the AI gave him preserving diplomat. Are we going to befriend Grimgor? Really? So he likes empires with good relations with free cities. He likes empires that do not start wars. He dislikes empires with a smaller domain. And he dislikes empires that break treaties. His strategy is to form alliances, to never break treaties, to explore, and to expand. What is this heresy? He's gone order? What the f fuck? Do I kill him just because of how heretical the AI made him?
Ugh. A distraught member of the Kokari Wilders Council requests an urgent meeting. Terrible news, my witch of the wilds. Our scouts have reported sightings of an army of blessed souls roaming our lands. Our forebearers told legends of these creatures, that they are bringers of death, and that seeing such a creature heralds 77 years of bad luck. But we must drive it away immediately to prevent unrest within our cities. The Kokari Wilders will panic when they notice the blessed souls are nearby. Blint. Blint. You built an outpost right next to my capital city. Uh oh. That's an act of hostility, Blint. Oh, we got a hunter spider. Wow. These also evolve into tier fours. Holy crap. Um. I'm afraid to take this on with this army because I don't want to lose the spiders. Quick save. Yeah. I'm going to try, though. We're going to give this a shot. Oh, yeah. High risk. What does the AI do? Dies. Got it. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to be really cheeky. We're going to want this guy up front. Oh, I have a new summon animal. Nice. This is fine then. Uh, pull you in, pull you in, pull you in, pull you in. Let's get our invigorate going. What do we summon? A Gortusk Matriarch. So we can treat the Gortusk Matriarch rather roughly. And we might. Let's get fortune or visions of victory. I could double cast Visions of Victory. I wonder what the Phoenix is going to do. So the Phoenix is a charge unit. So it, or shock unit. So it could either just run in and deal loads of damage, or it could come in and teleport for this. But if we're in this tight formation, I believe, and it's a two hangs radius. Hmm. It's probably going to do the AOE. I can do a fat sap. All right, let's do it. Let's over channel sap. Probably that guy. He's a tier two. And then most likely second visions. This gives full five times fortune. So we have a 50% chance to crit. Face the correct direction. Let's go. We have warding. We have defense. There's the ward coming in hot. Fantastic. And the Gore Tusk has been charged by that thing. Okay. Now, the only downside... Just kidding. Because we can just pull her back like so. We are 100% marking this is prey. And webbing everything we can. Good web. Web's OP. 70%. I have to take it. Lots of grazes, but that's all right. Let's go. Remember, the phoenix will come back to life. So, if I go here and flank, I can kill that and tie these two up. Seems like the play. Uh, we could melee this, or I could try and stun it. Let's just melee it, do damage. Good damage with the crit. Fantastic. Um... Immune to poison, blight resist. It's probably not even worth doing that, to be honest. Oh, the phoenix is frozen! Oh. Beautiful. That's from the spider web. What an absolute amazing play. That went so well. Uh, now I have to kill it, though. Wow. Wow. Worgen's damage is good. And it's only going to get better. Okay, we're being tied up by this bird. That's fine. Rear charge. 
get a kill. I think I let the Phoenix live. Which seems like a weird decision, I realize. But if I kill it, it's just going to come back. Is it guaranteed to come back? Yeah, so we can either kill it now and it'll rebirth its turn on its turn, or Okay. I made my mind up. Now it'll come back to life, deal damage at 40% of its health, and we can kill it then. Get the hunter spray there, kill that, fantastic. And unfortunately I can't kill this. I could go stun it. Then I'm gonna take fire damage. Go hit whatever you want. There's the revive. Going straight to the ice. Which is fine. Mark his prey. Get a good flank here. Can I... Good enough. Oregon? Well done. No need to run. I can just gore you with the Gortusk Matriarch. Well done, team. What a glorious roll event that happened there. Wow. Unbelievable. We got True Shots. The Tier 4 Bow. Wow. Fire range projectiles to target enemy unit. 20% chance to crit. They deal 20% bonus damage. 16 repeating. Well, I know what my first hero is going to be. And we got a Thunderbird. Now remember, this Thunderbird is not the Chaos reward. Or is it? I think it is. Okay, a tier 3 bird. Not bad. I'm almost glad we didn't get the Phoenix because that would really hurt our Imperium income. Whereas the tier 3 is just a really good battle mage. Not bad. Not bad. And of course, we can also construct an outpost here. We the people of Greenhold greet you, O Witch of the Wilds Morrigan, the Inheritor. You will find here a place of honor, glory, and devotion to chivalry. We anticipate that either peace will be achieved between us because of values we share or we will engage in glorious combat that the bards will sing of for ages to come. Give Leontina Lamplight one of your Whispering Stones. Another Tier 4 Vassal. Wow, okay. What am I looking at? Is that... Huh. So war breeds are a tier four unit from chaos. They're an abomination, basically created and mutated from their people to be huge and giant shock units. But this is a freaking mole, demonkin, war breed, and he's still got that smug little face. Okay, yeah, sure, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Unfortunately, I cannot obtain the Spring of Youth, so I'm glad I didn't attack it. I do want to go over here. Um, I guess I should get the Gold Vein now. Do I need another Quarry? I don't think I do. I do not, so let's get a Gold Vein. Uh, I'm going to need that for the, mi for the uh, Mint. I almost said Mint. Mint? Care for a pint of the Mint. I guess just go storehouse. I really need this foundation, though. The faster I get this, the faster the Imperium starts flowing. The faster the Imperium starts flowing, the sooner we start getting our upgrades. Okay. Can I take this on? Let's begin building an outpost. Because we have that Materium thing, it is one turn and 25 gold, so we can get it real fast. Ugh, this is going to be tricky. If I had a spear, this would be a different story. That's going to freaking hurt. There's a good chance the Shrine of Smiting kills us all. How's the AI do? 
Great. Alrighty. Let's... Oh, you don't have the special defense mode, okay. Well, you know the rules. And so do I. I summoned a unicorn. I have a unicorn now. Support units are good. Okay. We have to reposition this, I think. Because we're going to need to hit a really fat frozen net, I think. Unless the Eagle Rider just goes balls deep by itself, which is entirely possible. Visions of victory. I probably should try to get that another Thunderbird, to be honest. Um, I guess you need it the least. So we can kind of put you here, move you there, move Morgan there, move you here, over channel, cast again. I can actually just go here. He's probably going to buff his friends if I had to guess. Are we good now? Can I move? I think so. We want those guys to be in a position where they can get a good... I don't know if I want to move like this, but I'm going to. Uh, get a good web. Because the web is going to be really important for us. Yep, there's the rally. The bless. The unicorns are going balls deep. Ow. We knew that was coming, but it was still pretty painful. Um... Okay. We, I should have done this first, but that's okay. We can go all in on this guy. I still think... I want to be in... Ah, that's not good. Yep, my bad. In position to get a fat web. So, do like this. Bring you up. Defense. Because if the Eagle Rider flies over to get a flank here, the spider can be in position to hit it real good. Got the heal. That hurts. I need to charge that smite, the shrine. Oh, they cleansed him. Hmm. All right, let's go for this. Freeze. Oh, frozen resisted twice. All right, let's go for the flank. This will tie. This will block the shrine of smiting from doing anything. Now we need to talk about this thing. Do you have 100% from here? Oh, I do. Nice. Because this is a tier 4 unit that's going to deal lots of damage. I could do this, which seems good. Oh, ow. Alright. Please don't kill my spider. Good. Oh, it can move this way. Oh, okay, good. good, good. Nice. How far can you move? Okay. Can you heal again? You can. Fantastic. So now we have the Shrine of Smiting completely tied up. It cannot go anywhere. And I'm going to chase down that guy with the Ice Spider. Do we Bird of Prey it? Or Mark of Prey? I might as well. 90% shots. Take it. I forgot this existed. Is this all units? Oh, damn, it is. That blows.
I wonder then if I should go... No, I'm tying this thing up. I should have defended though, maybe. Alright. Oh, wow. Okay. Um... How do I want to do this? I guess we can go like this. I think I can kill this thing. Hmm. Without doing too much more damage to myself, I hope. There's the condemn. All right. Now this chaplain shouldn't really have anywhere to go. Or should just die to the attack opportunity. Hey bird. Get the kill. Nice. Alright, not bad. Not bad. We lost a warrior, which is really unfortunate, but we gained an Archon Blood. This is a wild army. Are we sure I'm playing Barbarians? Okay, so green holds here. In a nice little corner by themselves. Another tier 4 vassal I'm going to want to make my friends. Well, hello. Another ruler comes to threaten my empire. Just stay out of the way, and I will stay out of yours. Morrigan has traversed worlds. And still, Alistair is here to bug her. Yes, it is King Alistair, son of Merrick, the royal bastard himself. And apparently he's a fanatic isolationist. Which is... Not exactly what uh, Alistair would be, but that's fine. Uh, he likes empires without relationships with free cities. He likes empires that trade grievances. He dislikes empires that have many alliances. And he dislikes empires with multiple races. He is an isolationist. He is wary of treaties. You know, I could have read this when we were dealing with Sally Whitemane. But that's okay. He's wary of treaties. He exploits stuff. Cool. And expanding. Um. Fine. I'm probably going to kill him, to be honest, team. I feel like Morgan wanted to do that more than once. Animal Kinship is in. And our first, second tome is here. Now, I had a really hard time deciding what I wanted to do here. And I kept going back and forth and back and forth. And ultimately, I decided we're going to do the Tome of Evocation. Evocation is the first tier Astral Tome. And we're going to get an Astral Tome every tier. Because there is a particular tome that is very apropos for Morgan. And it's so much so that it's almost heretical to not get it. Uh, we will have to do some back research for certain things. But that's fine. We'll get there when we get there. So without further ado, the Tome of Evocation. Just as you may effectively utilize the protective potential of magic, it follows that you can employ it in a more devastating fashion in order to visit harm onto your foes. The thunder and the fury of the skies is at your disposal if you prove yourself worthy. It's tempestuous, destructive force is a perfect tool for blasting apart your enemies. That's true. We're going to grab lightning blades to buff up our units. Our ruler has also leveled up. I need to get another hero. I need to get another city. I need to get so many things. We're going to grab endurance. Precision? Endurance training. That amazing bow. Two empire skills are available. We can get more city cap, which we haven't even used yet. We can get more road building. And units regenerate additional 15 points in your own territory. I like that. I also like road building. It's expensive, but road gore is my favorite. Uh-oh. All right. Let's denounce him. 
Blint has insulted by Empire. And I guess we're going to end our declaration of friendship with him. I guess Blint is going to be our enemy this time, team. Stone Tree is at war with Kalidor. I thought you were going to be my friend. I'll denounce him. I'll denounce everyone. Uh, Oh, that's right. Wait, no, that's not it. Gorpit. Gorpit. Okay, it's Alistair, and we're beating him, so, you know, that's cool. Can I trade with anyone else? No. Hmm. We're slowly gaining allegiance. Why? Oh, crap. Ah, uh, that's not good. <laughs> Remember how I said I restarted in order to... Wait a minute. No, 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 no. I'm not a champion of the people. I'm a wizard king. Because otherwise I couldn't be a human. While having cat people. That's curious. Huh. Okay. I mean, I'll take the plus 100. <laughs> Grimgore recognizes his transgression. This will have a damaging effect on the relations Grimgore has with all AI rulers that know both you and Grimgore. It looks like Blint hasn't recognized his transgressions, though. Blint wants to fight. And you know what? That's fine. That's a Baylor. That's not fine. That's not fine at all. All right, team. We got to do it. We got to go to war with Blint. Blint doesn't like me. Blint's going to have to die. Let's grab that. It's one turn. I still haven't been able to generate a wild speaker because I need cash. We got the Archon Blood. This is okay. Actually, you know what? I do want it. We'll wait here one turn. We're going to get this because it gives me additional re research, which is a huge problem right now for us. Uh, you have found Alistair. Good job. I don't think this will become a city. It could be a decent one, but it's in the way of Gorpit. Well, maybe we just take it. I need Imperium. Let's get Animal Kinship going. We may not be so different after all, Morrigan. Your actions are promising. By all means. Continue. Cool. Um, you're not going to get mad when I end my declaration with Blint, are you? Because Blint and I are going to war. I need to come back here anyway. This map is looking wild. The Guardian Tree, look at that. Eternal Bedchambers. We found Alistair's capital. Okay. Hope he doesn't mind me poking around. Um, I guess you're going this way now. There's a watchtower here I missed. Good job, me. Alrighty. We'll scoot around the city to grab that watchtower. You have healed up. We'll end on this Silver Wonder. So let's do some more stuff. Um, Probably need money. I need money and mana. Do I just make this a stupid city? I think I do. I have just enough Imperium. Let's do it. Alright, here we go. The Haunted. I'm not full health, but I'm close enough, I think. The Haunted Halls. The province has already been claimed. Gorpit and Alistair. Yeah, sure, whatever. As you near the gate of the Haunted Halls, the noise of busy pickaxes echoes from its walls. 
A band of grave robbers can be spotted working inside, but before you can act, one of the grave robbers yells in horror when a skeletal hand grabs his arm. The grave robber flee. Grave robbers flee, leaving you and your army to deal with the bone dragon and other horrors that emerge from the coffins around them. The grave robber's greed has awakened the dead, and you find yourself in the middle of it. Two bone dragons, a banshee, a skeleton daddy, a bone daddy, bone wyvern, and a skeleton. I don't actually have great tools to deal with this. Alright. So my best tool for dealing with this is... Um... Oh, we're in a shit spot, too. Ah. Uh, I could leap into here. She feels like such a waste. We're going to. What's the cooldown on this? Two turns? Okay. Back up. Go here. Oh, a nightmare. That's good. So the reason why this is going to be pretty tricky is because we would really like to have spears. And um, this culture simply does not. Hello, everyone. Fade from the future here. In this attempt, I run forward to try and meet them on their terms and get surrounded by skeletons and lose everything. But I'm starting a new rule for this series. Whether we like to carry it over, you can let me know. But I get one retry per episode. That's it. If I don't use it, it's gone forever. If I do use it, well, it was consumed, and I'll let you know just like this. So if you ever let me know if you like the rule, I'm going to invoke my right of retrying right now. I'm going to invoke my retry. How do I do that, though? Better not come back. Okay, so if we want to try and position ourselves for the ultimate buff, um, another nightmare. Wow, I wonder if that's predetermined. And I guess this wasn't awful. I wonder if there's a place you can stand. Someone probably worked it out. Like the least possible skeletons, because that was a huge problem, right? Skeletons just spawned fucking everywhere. To be honest, it doesn't look like there's a good spot. Like right here, maybe. What if we corner camp? What if we corner camp? I went out to fight them like the brave, bold warrior that I am. But what if we just corner camp? You know? I guess if you stand here, you're fine. Hey. Okay. Should I edit down the the first attempt? Maybe. I don't know. I'm gonna corner camp. Oh. 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 I thought that was like you could just retreat. Nope. If you retreat, bad things happen. Actually, hold on, go back. If I do this, the dragon could still fly at me. But maybe it would be okay. Maybe not. Okay, how far can you move? Up there. I feel like I should switch places here. Because you can jump. Let's see how this goes. What was haunted? The dr the hunter. Okay, the banshee's in. You broke one. You broke one. Okay. Let's see if I can hit this. Wait, hold on. Before that, what do we do? Do I mark his prey? No, no, I think we just rip the spiders. 
So we'll rip this guy first to try and immobilize them. Unfortunately, no hits. Looks like no damage. So we'll go here. We got one frozen. Do I dare? I feel like I have to kill the skeleton so that it does less damage to this guy. But I want her damage on him. Ah. If I mark you as prey, some good damage. Oh, that's good damage. It's great damage. That's a kill. Ugh. Hurts my soul. How are you doing? Beat the shit out of that skeleton. Oh, yeah. That's good. What about you? Not doing much here. But you're contributing to the cause with the crits. All right. This is fine. That's fine. Still fine. We went for the hero. That's okay. Kind of expected. If I do this, it's a bit of damage. Let's do it. I should have regret everything. I think there's a world in which I kill two dragons here. I don't know what world that is, but there's a world. Good crits. Okay. Kill that. And you can kill that. Okay. There is not a world in which two dragons die. Unless... Oh, there's a world in which two dragons die! Yes. Good. Uh, you're dead. Sorry. Um. Uh, you just hit that. Do some damage. Okay. That's all I can do. Ooh, that was a good way to kill that guy. Probably the best way to kill that guy, to be honest. Okay, you're haunted. Um. Hmm. Can you do anything cool? I can roll some 70s to kill that. Killing stuff is good. I can't believe that's not a kill. Hmm. The thing we're going to want to do is mark you as prey and then... Oh, it's so close. That should allow you to finish her. 50-50? Really? Nice. Do some spirit damage. Get a charge. Beautiful. Let's flank the Bone Daddy. Then you stand... Attacking here is a flank, but if I stand here, I pop that sarcophagus. So instead, I'm going to stand here and hit them. Oh. Don't say anything. It's looking good, team. I thought I was going to have to re- like, I thought I was going to do some quick save shenanigans, but nope. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We did it. We saved the spoders. I believe killing this is the last thing I need to do. Let's go. Nice. A glorious victory. Ah, oh, you have survived the undead onslaught in the haunted halls. Now the tome, tomb is safe to be searched. With the grave robbers long gone, your army wastes no time and immediately starts to gather any knowledge they can find about the people who were buried here. This tomb belonged to a fallen king, 
who was buried with the entire court after his assassination. One of your soldiers points to a few decorated coffins elevated above the others. Their contents ought to be special. The Staff of Decay. No, good. Give me the money. I am no grave robber. La la. That's a lot of what Morgan did. Rub graves. Animal kinship is ready. I should have cast this first. Um. Do we apply that to Morgan? No, we don't apply that to Morgan. It's fine. Let's go. Oh, your eyes turned green. So now whenever they stand next to an animal or a calf, there won't be any calf. They will gain... The unit will have 10% damage and 10% crit hit chance. Morgan could have used it, but because she's a backliner, I wasn't too keen on it. We also have the lightning blades. And we could do Call of the Wild, sure. Yeah. It's a one-turn research. Morgan has gained a rank after her remarkable performance. And I guess she's going to get Inspiring Leader... Maybe? We'll get Lightning Evoker. Ah. So, uh, Blint has ended my declaration of friendship with a declaration of rivalry. What happens if I re-declare this? Modifier slowly decreases relations by 300. Any grievance gained against that ruler will be increased by 40%. Okay, whatever. I don't think there was any benefit for that, but who knows. We can trade with you now. Ooh, you got another magical thing. Additional allegiance. Research costs less. Ooh, that would be good. But you're about to be my vassal, which gives me that anyway. I don't really have the money to start drafting things. So let's go that. I don't have much mana, do I? At least we finally have some gold, so we can start queuing up a wild speaker. That would be two turns if I did that thing. I have zero conduits. But let's get a mana obelisk. Queued up. Blint is not my friends. And before I press end turn, I think that is where Morrigan's very first episode will end. Morrigan, the Lord of Regret. No, you're not. Okay, that is the beginning of Morrigan, the Inheritor, the Witch of the Wild, her journey. I hope you are as excited as I am to see this to its totality. And, of course, to keep these spiders alive at all costs. We're going to have tier fours next episode, assuming I don't kill them, and it's going to be great. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you to the patrons and the channel members who support the channel. I greatly appreciate you. And if you would like to be happy channel, feel free to join the Discord description down below. And I will see you next time for more shenanigans as war with the smug mole man is on the horizon. And hopefully we can keep it away from everyone else. I still can't believe this is a diplomatic room door. <sighs> Bye.